Hi, my name is Mackenzie Lunsford. I'm a food writer for the Mountain Express, and I had the opportunity to interview Anthony Bourdain. And uh, near the end of the interview, I posed a few questions that were provided to me by uh, some local chefs, some chefs around Asheville. And the uh, first question that I asked him came from Katie Button, the chef of Kurate, who asked, well, she said, many chefs absorb absorb themselves in their work. Is it possible to be a great chef and balance family life and work? Can you have it all? And if so, how do you do it? And this was his answer. I don't think you can. I, I don't I don't think you can. I, in my experience, I don't know of any chef who's ever been able to do that, honestly. I mean, to be a great chef, mm -hmm. I mean, a really top flight, national profile, Mm -hmm. uh, respected uh, as being at the top of your game, somebody's going to pay the price there, you know? Yeah. It, not just you, the people who love you, the people who count on you. You, you know, you're not, you're, you can't be a fully formed, I, in my experience, you cannot be a complete or even fully formed personality when and, and maintain that those kind of hours, the mm -hmm. kind of hours necessary mm -hmm. and the kind of focus. Um, I know a lot of chefs with reasonably happy marriages, but but they're not normal. They're not normal marriages. Uh, they're, they're, you know, everybody understood getting in. Somebody's taken a secondary role, to say the least. Somebody's somebody loses. Yeah. In the end, you know, it's, a, it's an enormous, enormous, enormous sacrifice called for. Um, you know, like I said, I know a lot of you know chefs with happy, you know reasonably happy marriages, but but I. Uh, they're not as good as they could have been had, had both parties had normal jobs. Um, and this one, a little bit on the lighter side, um, Adam Benash of Zombra, which is a great spot, wants to know what your favorite American food city is. Favorite American food city? Well, it's got to be New York. I mean, I'm a mm. New Yorker, and, yeah. and that's where, you know, all my friends are, you know, my friends are cooking, uh, you know, it's, it's 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 there's just so much of it. You know, we 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 benefit from having so many people of different incomes that are able to support so many different types of restaurants and so many different so many large uh, so many large uh, ethnic populations from all over the world, uh, large enough to support restaurants that that are cooking for them, not you know some Western concept of what Thai or Chinese or. Uh, you know, or Japanese or Korean should be like. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I'd say New York. But you know, I'm a, you know, I love. I also love San Francisco, Chicago, Portland, uh, Oregon, uh, yeah, yeah. Cleveland, uh, Minneapolis. Wow. You know, there were a lot of, you know, every year the, the situation seems to get better and better. I was uh, pretty impressed by Austin. I don't know if you've been there lately. Yeah, I love Austin. A great food truck scene, too. Yeah, actually, one of my uh, questions from a chef who owns a food truck, and we're going through this major food truck catastrophe right now in town, um, he would like to know what your opinion on food trucks is. Well, I mean, I think uh, anything that democratizes food to the meaning, you know, brings better than expected food out into the street where it's, read, you know, basically it's any alternative to the conventional or traditional fast, you know, American fast food is, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're offering, it's icy food trucks as an alternative to McDonald's, so that alone is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Um you're you're creating a market for individually owned and operated businesses uh, serving presumably fast, cheap, and delicious. Um, that's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, a lot of cities are fighting back, and they don't like these trucks. They right. see them as a threat to brick and mortar. They don't like the health aspects. Uh, the house lobbies or forces aligned against them. Mm -hmm. And then again, there's the, the, the likelihood that as the, as we meet some sort of a, uh, you know, you know, hipster uh, sort of uh, fishing, um, you know, the bad guys will get in. You know, you will see an Olive Garden food truck. You know, right. it's inevitable. Yeah. But for the time being, I think it's a really positive thing. 
I, I love them. I think they're, they're valuable and they provide opportunities for a lot of entrepreneurial young chefs to do really interesting things. And there, there's so many examples of that around the country, particularly in like Austin, LA, uh, San Francisco, uh, where they've been very supportive of, of, uh, of, of the trucks. Mm. And uh, this one will probably kind of crack you up a little bit. You've been pretty vocal about your um, <laughs> how you feel about vegetarianism, and I have to say that I don't disagree with uh, many of your points at all. Uh, but Jason Sellers, one of our uh, vegan chefs, he's also a kung fu master, wanted to know if you would be willing to visit his restaurant plant to, and I quote, Quell some of that open animosity with some open mindedness, he says. Listen, I'm completely, perfectly okay with vegetarians, you know, yeah. practicing whatever, you know, doing whatever they want to do. I just think they make for bad travelers. And then, they just, <laughs> you know, I, that's what pisses me off. Yeah. You know, I think I, you know, I, if you're not eating, if you're eating vegetables or vegan because for, for, uh, religious reasons, fine. Uh, what you do in, the, in your home or in your hometown, even in the industrialized world, I'm totally okay with that. That's your personal choice. Mm -hmm. But I think the notion that you can travel, I mean, and I'm not talking about Rome or Paris, you know, of course you can call ahead yeah. and say, you know, do you have any vegetarian options? But you can't do that in the, in the developing world mm -hmm. uh, without offending people. Mm -hmm. um, even Jonathan Safran Foer understands that. Um, that that it, that it's awkward and hurtful to go to grandma's house and turn down the turkey. Um, yep. That's my problem. I just see it as rude and incurious. I like that. Rude and incurious. Uh, Anthony Serrato grew up in New Nutley, New Jersey. Are you familiar with that place? Apparently, it doesn't even have a hospital. <laughs> uh, I know of it, uh, but I don't know that I've been to Nutley. Uh, but I mean, I probably drove by, you know, drove through yeah. during my idle teenage life. Well, yeah. he wants to know how growing up in New Jersey affected your palate. Uh, but if anything, it made me crave. I, I think it's. I lived what really, really close to New York City. My father worked there. You know, we looked at it every day from the from the cliffs. So it, it created a yearning for New York and a mystery and a magic about the place. Uh, it, it was always the, sort of the focus of my desires. That was where the good stuff was. Susie Phillips, who actually fled uh, Beirut with her family and now lives in Asheville and has a food truck. She wants to know if uh, you mind telling us what your guilty pleasures are as far as food is concerned that you don't really like to admit to most people. Uh, the macaroni and cheese at the Popeye's. Yeah. <laughs> and Popeye, just Popeye's in general, you know, nasty Popeye's fried chicken. And, and But I mean, I don't feel guilty about that as much as I feel guilty about, uh, uh, you know, a Popeye's or KFC uh, quality macaroni and cheese. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I crave that shit now and again. Uh, but but that's one of them. That That's uh, <laughs> probably my most shameful uh, guilty pleasure. It seems like you and Paula Dean could probably uh, get together on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Processed cheese and overcooked uh, pasta, yeah. <laughs> that concludes my conversation with Anthony Bourdain. If you would like to hear more of it or if you'd like to read the entire transcript of the interview, it's available at mountainx.com forward slash dining. And uh, Anthony Bourdain also will be appearing at the Thomas Wolfe Auditorium on Saturday, November the 5th. Thanks for listening.